Come back in time with me. Let me take you back to 1944 so I can tell you an amazing story. World War II has been going on for over four years and it's taken its toll in Europe. The fighting is fierce. Switzerland has managed to stay out of the war, but all its border countries are controlled by the Axis powers and their economic partners have been ravaged by the fighting. The rail lines in all surrounding countries have been bombed and destroyed to prevent troop movements. Economic trade was at a virtual standstill. Unable to move freight, logistic companies were going out of business. One such company was named Lively Transport. And Lively Transport had an employee named Adolf Lamprecht. He was my great-grandfather. He had been working there since he was 20 years old. He was 46 now. After a 26-year career dedicated with Lively Transport, my great-grandfather realized that his future with this company was very uncertain. He knew he had to do something. He had family to support, including his 17-year-old son, Adolf Lambrecht Jr., my grandfather. He must have been good at what he was doing because he was able to convince two investors to use their money and support him in opening a new freight forwarding company. You have to realize how significant that is. In a day and at a time when freight forwarders are closing up shop, unable to move goods, this person decides to swim upstream and convince investors to open a new business. So here they were. It was January 1st, 1945. My great-grandfather, Adolf Lambrecht Sr., along with my grandfather, Adolf Lambrecht Jr., who was just 17 years old at the time, began a new business. With the rail lines destroyed, shipments with needed goods were not able to cross borders, and with all of the border countries immersed in a global war, Adolf Lambrecht Sr., his son, and three employees opened an office inside the German rail station in Basel and began operations. The odds were stacked wholly against them. In April of that same year, the war came to an end. However, nothing had changed, and nothing was able to move by rail which was the normal mode of transport for freight, due to the destruction of the rail lines. The only way anything was moved was by truck. Switzerland was a country that relied heavily on imports and the need was tremendous. During the months immediately preceding the end of the war, my great-grandfather had been diligently working on a solution which he believed would be valuable when the war ended. He had a daring plan to develop trucking routes to bring goods into Switzerland. And so it was on August 17th, eight and a half months after the company began and four months since the war ended, that the company went to a whole new level when it was able to pull off a transport of 90 tons of fresh fish from Denmark to Switzerland with dry ice and a convoy of trucks. That fresh fish shipment was the first of its kind. Never before in Europe had trucking been established as an economically viable mode of cross-border transport. But with no rail lines available, the landscape had changed. My great-grandfather had the foresight to realize that inevitably trucking would be the solution. To pull off this shipment, it took quite a bit of logistic skills on his part. To be able to make the transport, things had to be carefully planned and organized. A place where the truck drivers could stay at night for the journey had to be pre-planned and of course a place to park the convoy of trucks had to be set up. Military checkpoints had to be crossed safely. Liquor, cigarettes, money and food were involved in convincing soldiers and in dealing with border security. The shipment made news and it firmly established the company into the foreseeable future other freight forwarders began to co-load with us, as at that time it was the only viable way for them to get their goods onto the truck convoys prepared by my great-grandfather. 
So now comes the really interesting and very intriguing part of the story, which is the reason why I can tell you all of this. You see, it started in 2017. American Lamprecht had begun preparing for its upcoming 50 year anniversary and the company president, Gary Warnicke, asked me what I could tell him about my great grandfather to make a dedication to his founding of the company for the commemoration. At the time, I didn't know much about my great grandfather. He passed away before I was even born. In fact, at that point, I wasn't even sure about his first name. So I began looking around and asking questions so I could find out more. And while trying to find out more about him and the history of the company, me and my aunt found buried deep in some closet at 48 Peter Marion Street, an old box. In the box we found a document. It was called Memorandum, about the foundation and development of Lambert Transport AG for the 20th anniversary of the company. This document is over 22 pages and it covers everything I just told you about. It was written by my great-grandfather himself and it explains his thinking, the challenges that he and the company faced and his philosophy on how the company should conduct itself. I struck gold. Along with this memorandum, buried in the box, was a full archive of photographs covering the period from 1945 up to 1971. All this was included in this box, which had been laying without marking of significance in a closet until this remarkable discovery. It's through this memorandum and these photographs that I can share this amazing story with you. So join me as we go visit and speak to the people who were there as we hear stories about Lamprecht, where it was, where it is, and where it will be. Here comes the sun, do 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 do. Here comes the sun, and I say it's alright. 